Welcome, everybody. This is Etiquette Trends for 2023. I am Jacqueline Whitmore, your host for today, and I'm really excited that you joined me uh, at the end of this year. I know we're kind of wrapping up all our uh, businesses and we're, we're looking towards the future and we're planning for 2023. And many of you are in the etiquette and image industry. Some of you are just lovers of all things etiquette. And I welcome you as well. But more importantly, I want to get your feedback. I want to find out why you're here and what why you're spending the next hour with me and what you hope to gain. So if you could type that in the chat, I would greatly appreciate it because the chat is the way that I would like to interact with a lot of you today. That way we can keep the noise level down and we can keep the recording clean. So if you could just share with me why you um, have registered for this this seminar. And if you're not on mute, I would appreciate it if you put yourself on mute. And that way, at the end, I may take um, I may take everybody off a of mute so we can interact with each other. But for now, it would be really nice to just use the chat. So um, Patrick is from Vancouver. He's a volunteer um, at IITTI, which I'll introduce him in a bit and ask him to um, share with us what he's been working on on a worldwide basis when it comes to etiquette. So Nancy, you want to learn any fresh ideas for attracting clients. Okay, great. Diane, feeling as if I'm uh, out of date since I've been fairly isolated. That's true. I think when the pandemic hit, we all felt like we were sent to our rooms for two and a half years. And now we're all coming out of our cocoons and we're all trying to figure out what is the next step in terms of our businesses, where we're going, what are we going to do when we grow up? And it's a really great time to reinvent ourselves and to figure out how can we best serve our clients in the etiquette and image industry and beyond. If you're a consultant or if you're a coach, many of you use etiquette in part with your curriculum. Maybe you're not concentrating solely on etiquette, but you use it as a piece of the puzzle to help your clients. And that's really uh, very, very important. Let's see, what else did you say? Arden, always love connecting with other etiquette consultants and would like to hear perspectives on our new reality. Okay. And Victoria, welcome. Victoria is, um, she's got a fabulous podcast, um, victoriamoran.com. I um, highly recommend you check that out. She interviews remarkable women from all over and she has written many books, um, including Living a Charmed Life. She also wrote the introduction to my book, Poise for Success. So please check Victoria out, victoriamoran.com. So she's here because she's a fan of civility and she's at a loss about what is proper in 2023. I think a lot of us are wondering what's proper. Do we kiss, bow, shake hands? Do, what, what do we do? Okay, let's see. Renita, she loves all things etiquette. She loves to learn and share new things with people in the same industry. I agree. It's all about, I think 2023 is all about connection and collaboration. And it's so, most important for us to connect and collaborate with those within our industry not only people in general, but especially with those in our industry, because the etiquette industry can feel very small sometimes because many of us work from home, we work alone, and it gets very isolating. Okay, let's see, Beth. Beth retired from being an etiquette consultant in 2019, but she would still like to keep up and she really wants to know what the trends are given coming out of the pandemic. Okay, so it seems like this, this particular webinar is timely to a lot of you. Diane, feeling as if I'm out of date since I have been fairly isolated, okay? Nancy wants to learn fresh ideas. Okay, excellent. And uh, Renee, I want to know what the latest trends in correspondence, 
communications, business dress codes, dining, tipping, social issues. We need a half day for that, <laughs> Renee. Um, I would love to, uh, maybe you can hold on to that question at the end. If we don't answer it in the time that we're together, we can answer it at the end because I think those are all very important questions. So correspondence, communications, business dress codes, dining, tipping, social occasions. My goodness, these are just amazing. Um, and Deidre, I want to do this as a full-time consulting business. Great customer service etiquette protocol needed in many industries. I totally agree. Whether you're doing this full-time or you're adding it as an extension of your coaching business, I think it is a win-win for not only you, but also your client. Donna, I would like to learn as much as I can to be able to stay in tune and today. Okay. Oh, we've got, uh, we've got a little one on the, on the call. If everybody could go ahead and mute. In fact, I'll try to mute us all. Okay. There we go. Can everybody still hear me? If so, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So I, I will... Um, Thank you so much for all these comments. There are, they're just coming in so quickly. Uh, I'll read one more. Elizabeth says, oh, Elizabeth, she's from FIU in Miami. She is um, one of my former clients. I used to work with her students in the marketing department, and I used to teach dining etiquette and uh, job readiness to her students many years ago. And she says she's in Miami, work as a professor and teach marketing yourself as a resource for students to transition from the classroom to the workplace. She says, I use JW, JW, my materials. We've been, we've known each other for 15 plus years as she has given many presentations at our university. I need to keep up with the latest trends. Okay, well, welcome, welcome everybody. So I'm just going to share my screen because I just have a couple of slides. This is not a slide heavy presentation, but I just want to share with you a, a little presentation that I put together today. And then I'm going to ask uh, Patrick to step in because, as I said, I'm giving a Western point of view of what's going on in the world of etiquette. Patrick can give an Eastern point of view because he lives in China for four years, including four years during the pandemic. And he also runs a international soft skills assessment program that um, is extremely popular all over the world. So let me see if I can share my screen with all of you. Okay, here we go. And let me here hit share. Okay, and put it on full screen. Okay, let's see here. Can everybody see my screen? You should be able to. <laughs> I can't see you, but um, you can probably see my screen. So let me just go through these slides fairly quickly, and then we will um, put you on full screen. Okay, back to the new future, etiquette trends for 2023. For those of you who don't know who I am, <laughs> welcome. I'm Jacqueline Whitmore, and I've written two books. Poise for Success, Mastering the Four Qualities that Distinguish Outstanding Professionals. And also my first book was Business Class, Etiquette Essentials for Success at Work. Both of those books can be purchased on Amazon. Those books were written in 2005 and 2011. And I believe that the information is still relevant. However, if I were to update these books, I would include a lot of information pertaining to technology etiquette. I think that's important. Uh, I would also change the sections on dressing for success because I believe that our world has become more casual, even though I enjoy dressing up and I know many of you also, but the workplace is changing so dramatically. So there are some things that I would change in these books, but still very, very relevant. 
I'm also the founder of the Protocol School of Palm Beach. I founded my company in 1998 after spending more than a decade in the hospitality and tourism industry. And um, I'm a certified business etiquette and protocol expert, as I know many of you to, you are certified in the industry. So inquiring minds want to know, what the heck happened to our manners at work? What's going on now in the workplace versus prior to the pandemic and even beyond? What's going on? What is happening to our society? Is etiquette even important? During the pandemic, I spent a lot of time alone pondering the same question. Why do people care? Do they even care? Is the etiquette business going to still survive after all of this? And I, I know many of you do the same thing. So let me just share with you some of the comments that I believe have changed the face of etiquette. And just by the way, I include this information in my presentations because I think when I'm speaking to corporate audiences, it's important for me to convey what I believe is changing etiquette and, and how it has changed so that they're aware of what's going on. So this is a slide that I show in my corporate presentations, who and what's to blame for the um, just the, the world of etiquette and, and is, it, is it disappearing? So at the very top, you can see I put the pandemic. Um, in 2020, the world literally stopped. It changed for many of us. And if you work in the speaking industry like I do, your phone wasn't ringing anymore. You were um, trying to figure out what the next move was. Maybe you were trying to figure out how to pay your bills and, and just make ends meet. That's when I started getting to work and I started taking courses because I had the time and B, I felt like it was a great time to polish part of my education. So um, I'll tell you the different courses that I took, one in particular that I took that has changed the way I do business completely. Number two, the internet and technology It is continuing to evolve and continuing, continually changing how we do business. Number three, the tight labor market. People, I think, are more stressed and they're pulled thin and they're, um, they're at their wit's end. And, and, and I know you've witnessed it when you go into restaurants or when you go into um, the shopping malls, you see that Everyone is just doing the job of two people. So it's a, a tight labor market that may have something to do with the lack of etiquette. The Gen Z, this is a really important piece of the puzzle because we have four generations in the workplace now. We have the Gen uh, Z, we have the millennials, we have the Gen Xs, and then we have the baby boomers. And then uh, <laughs> we even have a, a, a smattering of traditionalists that are still working, that refuse to retire for whatever reason. So we have a communication breakdown because there are so many different generations. Um, then we have pop culture, movies, television, reality television, um, the internet. These are things that are influencing the way in which people behave and, and people are looking at these celebrities and influencers as role models and they're emulating what they say and what they do. So pop culture has something to do with the breakdown of etiquette. Dress Down Fridays, this started occurring in the 1980s when companies started allowing their employees to wear jeans to work on Fridays, to have casual Fridays, and to wear t-shirts. And then people took it to the extreme, and then they started wearing leggings, and then the pandemic hit, and people were doing Zoom calls in their pajamas. I mean, it has just gotten... Um, more casual and as time has gone on. And then finally, 
Some people even believe that the parents are to blame for the breakdown in etiquette because we've got mom and dad working. We have children raising children. The breakdown of the family unit uh, could be partly to blame. The I remember my mom had her same home for 35 years. People aren't staying in the same location for a long period of time. They're not talking to their neighbors. It's, so the parents, whether you believe these are the culprits or not, throughout the years of my research, I've been keeping track of and polling many of my um, followers and and corporate clients to find out what they believe the breakdown has been. And, and if you want to type what you think in the chat, uh, what do you feel has led to the breakdown of etiquette in our society? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with this list? Do you have one thing in particular that you think really led to um, the disappearance of etiquette. I'd like to hear from you. So um, I'm going to look at the chat for just a second. Okay. Stressful news, Cindy said. Absolutely. Definitely. Everyone's stressed out. Okay. 100% with, I agree, 100%. Um, Kenneth, welcome from Kenya. What do you believe the breakdown has been? Social media, the biggest thing. Um, Victoria, can you be a little bit more specific when you say social media? I'd love to know. Uh, Chinello, breakdown of family. Interesting. Um, okay. People have adapted and I don't care attitude. And, and Donna, you know what I think has been um, a catalyst for that? With the advancement of technology, we almost have put ourselves in a bubble. We're so focused on our smartphones. I mean, we see people walking around daily, staring into their smartphones and not paying attention to those around them. And my definition of etiquette may be di different from yours, but my definition of etiquette is the art of knowing how to treat other people. It's being mindful of how our behavior affects other people. And if you're mindful about your behavior, then you're mindful of how it affects other people. Um, Vivian, uncertainty, okay. Renee, a divisive society. And not only society, but I see a divisiveness even in the workplace, the Gen Zs from the boomers. Back when I was in the corporate arena, I remember looking forward to happy hours, those afternoon get togethers, um, that, those, those activities that brought us all together and unified us as, as a company. But what I'm finding now is the Gen Zs don't necessarily want to mix business with pleasure. They don't want to go out with their peers. And I don't want to say all Gen Zs. This is just a general statement. We all know that some Gen Zs do want to go out and socialize with their peers. However, what I have found is the majority want to keep their social life separate. They don't want to go back home after work is over and, and shut work out and then um, and but whereas my generation, the boomers, we look forward to those after hour events. Um, okay, so thank you. We've got a couple more comments. Entitlement, someone said, Beth. <laughs> okay, a huge lack of respect says, okay, excellent. So, and if you're not on mute, please mute yourself. That way we can keep the recording as clean as possible. Um, Jeanette, I'm going to read one more comment. I feel it also starts at school, where from K to 12 students in the USA are allowed to dress in any possible disrespectful way, losing track of what is proper to wear at school, work, the beach, the park, church. Same applies on how teachers dress. 
And we all know it starts at the top that the leadership from the top trickles down. And if you don't have a strong leadership or a strong program in place, when I go to some of these corporations and they want me to teach Dress for Success, one of the first things I ask is, may I see a copy of your dress code policy? So I can enforce that. I can be the voice for you. I can say those things that you can't or won't say. And what I'm finding is many of these companies don't have any kind of dress code in place at all. And that's unfortunate because back in the day, um, when I was in the corporate world, we had a very strict dress code. I had worked for Disney, I worked for the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, where you had to um, wear a certain color of hose. Your earrings couldn't be bigger than uh, a quarter. I mean, it was crazy strict back in those days. Um, Aaron says, degradation of role models from politics to entertainment. Okay, so that's um, that's interesting. And Victoria says, and we don't like rules, so we don't have any. It was so comforting to know what to wear, who walks through the door first, et cetera. And now it's the wild, wild west. <laughs> totally agree with that, Victoria. So this is what I think it, evolution has looked like over the years. Remember the days when men wore suits, women wore suits, and then we went into business casual and no one knew what business casual was. Then we went into a lower level of business casual where we were allowed to wear jeans and then people started wearing their yoga pants, their flip-flops, and uh, even their pajamas when they started doing Zoom calls. So, <laughs> in fact, you may wonder, what do you wear when you're on a virtual conference call? Do you have to dress formally from head to toe? My answer is no. In fact, um, I, I like to be comfortable from the waist down, but from the waist up, I like to look as if I'm in the boardroom with, with my clients. So I think it's extremely important to keep up that professional persona, especially when you're um, dealing with your clients. So this is what the new etiquette looks like. We're seeing virtual happy hours, virtual conference etiquette, virtual weddings, funerals, social distancing, mask etiquette. What is next? Is the handshake dead? What I'm seeing now that I'm starting to go out into the world and speak in person again, which I'm thrilled about, I am seeing people start to shake hands again. But I'm also telling my clients that if someone doesn't want to shake your hand for whatever reason, that's okay. It's their prerogative. As we know, the pandemic changed everything, and we still have to respect a person's space. We still have to respect their um, their choice, whether they want to shake hands or not. So really what I feel is important is to keep an open mind more so than ever. Minds are like parachutes. They only function when they're open. Um, and let me hit stop share for just a minute because I want you to see me. <laughs> I uh, have a gr I have a friend who is an astrologer, and she said to me recently, she said, Jacqueline, in 2020, we entered the age of Aquarius, and uh, many of you have heard the age of Aquarius. You've heard the song Age of Aquarius, and I asked her, I said, Brenda, what do you mean by that? And she said, what that means is in 2020, we had a shakeup. We had something um, terrible happen on a basis. And when, when bad things happen, oftentimes it brings um, changes. And many of those changes can be positive. And so what she believes the age of Aquarius is, is um, it means the advancement of technology. The technology is going to move even quicker now. Um, you, Many of you have heard of artificial intelligence. What I see, um, uh, um, someone told me yesterday they were in Costco and there was a robot, a, a life-size robot um, going 
going around sweeping the floors. And, and this robot could sense if someone was in the vicinity and it would stop and allow the person to pass and then it would continue to sweep. Those iRobots, uh, you've probably seen them. Maybe you have one in your house that vacuums your house. So artificial intelligence could possibly um, change the face of the speaking industry. It, really, the virtual world could change the face of the speaking industry. So she, she believed that technology was going to be advancing even more so now. And she said something really interesting that, um, that made me perk up. She said she also sees diversity and inclusion being at the fore. And, and I said, well, what do you mean by that? She said, you're going to see a lot more companies implement diversity and inclusion programs. And when I thought about it, uh, I, I said to myself, she's right, because last year I did a program for, for a company, I won't say the name of it, but they're, um, trying to be as inclusive and progressive as possible. And they wanted me to teach Dress for Success. And so I've been working with this company for years and, and the new planner said, but I want you to take out the slides of the women wearing skirts. And I said, really? And I don't want you to um, talk about makeup. I don't want you to necessarily talk too much about hair. And I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. And she said, what I would like for you to do is try to find some slides that are non-binary. I want to include um, everyone. And I don't want, um, I want you to try to find slides that are more non-gender oriented. And so, of course, I had to go online and I had to change that part of my presentation. I kept it very short and sweet. And also, she said to me, um, we now can't, um, we can't tell our employees not to have tattoos. We can't tell them not to have piercings because some of the tattoos uh, may have um, a, a, a symbolic, be sim symbolic of religion or their beliefs. And so... So basically, I tell you all this because what I'm seeing is some of the more progressive companies, which this is a good thing, they're including um, so many more, um, you know, they're including race, gender, sexual orientation, all of this in their training programs. So what, regardless of what your beliefs are, don't be surprised if you see this in your presentations. The other thing she said to me, and I think this is extremely important for those of you who are teaching introductions, pronouns are now um, something that we need to address. If you go on LinkedIn and you see someone's name, oftentimes underneath the name, it says he, him, or she, her, they, there. And so in our introductions, when we're teaching people how to meet and greet, what I'm finding is that a lot of the Gen Zs want to be addressed by their pronoun and not their name. So these are all things that or their name and their pronouns. So these are things that we all need to be aware of as we're moving into the new era. Uh, and, and in 2023, we need to be talking about um, things like introductions with pronouns. We need to be incorporating non-binary slides in our Dress for Success presentation. Um, when we talk about handshaking, we need to be open-minded and let our audience members know that it's okay not to shake hands or follow the lead of the host. Um, dining hasn't changed so much, but uh, networking might have changed quite a bit in your arenas. And maybe you're seeing these same things that I'm seeing. But the other thing that I think is so very, very important for us to keep in mind, especially if you're teaching etiquette and image, is how you appear on your virtual conference calls. So I 
back when the pandemic hit, I took action and I put together a presentation called Virtual Presence, How to Put Your Best Face Forward. And I use that presentation in every single program that I do because let me share with you this funny story. I was being interviewed on a podcast recently and the host told me that uh, her friend works for a large corporation and they're all now back at work. So she said when they get ready to have a meeting, you know, back in the old days, they everybody would just walk to a boardroom and have a meeting. But she said, even though they work in the same office, they still do the meeting virtually from their desks via um, a platform like Zoom or um WebEx or one of the other programs. And I thought that was a little sad because here we're all back together again, but yet we're still not walking down the hall and greeting each other. We're not taking the time to connect with one another. And what that does, it affects our social skills. And When you put people in a networking situation where they have to meet and greet in person, what I'm finding is especially the the generation that grew up with the smartphones and the computers and they they came out of the womb (laughs) learning how to use a smartphone. What I'm finding is these people struggle. They struggle with um, anxiety. Um, Many of you may be parents of 20, 21-year-old, 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds, and they're struggling with depression. They're struggling with anxiety. They need a a pill to get them through the day. Uh, And I'm not saying that that's strictly for the 20-somethings. We're seeing people who work for big corporations um, on medication. But what I am seeing and what I have done in my research is I've found out that more and more people are relying on medication to get them through the day. So when we go into the workplace, we have to be more mindful of this social anxiety epidemic that is going on in the industry. And so what I have started doing in my presentations, I do a lot of interactive exercises. And I used to just pull people from the audience and bring them up to the front and say, let's do an introduction exercise, or let's talk about handshaking. And I need volunteers to come up to the front and and demonstrate conversation skills. I don't do that anymore. I still make my programs extremely interactive because it's important to keep your audience engaged every 10 minutes to keep them awake, (laughs) mostly, but it also reinforces the information. But what I'm doing now is I'm asking for volunteers. And instead of pointing out to them Um, the things they need to improve. We all need to improve on something. What I'm doing is I'm focusing more on the things that they are doing correctly. Because when you tell a person what their strength is, they're going to work on that strength. Now, if they ask, well, what can I do to improve? Then of course, um, I'm going to give them some ideas or suggestions. But I think it's so very, very important to build people up, especially nowadays where they're, they feel defeated, they feel depressed, they feel beaten down. Um, and what I have also noticed is in this world of um, technology, we're craving connection with one another. We're craving that connection. So it's so important now for me to incorporate these networking programs in my etiquette um, curriculum because people don't know how to converse with each other. They don't know how to start a conversation. They don't know how to end a conversation. They're feeling anxious when they have to go to any kind of event with a room full of strangers. And so it's really important to go easy and, and, and focus on the positive. So I see we've got some comments in the chat. I just want to glance at those. Um, Victorians, v- Victoria says, I totally respect people who want to share pronouns and I 
do my best to remember and honor those, but I don't want to be required to share my pronouns. And I don't want to be ridiculed if I make a pronoun mistake. It's one thing to learn 20 names, quite another to learn 60 pronouns too. I know etiquette is about putting people at ease. Can we put ourselves at ease too? I don't want to feel that every gathering is a vast opportunity to get things wrong. Absolutely. And, and this is what I, this is how I approach that, Victoria. In my seminars, I say to the participants, if you would like to be addressed by your pronoun, you say your name, and then you say he, him, or she, her. And that way it tells the receiver how you want to be received. It would be like me saying, my name is Jacqueline, but please call me Jackie. And then you being the receiver, you know, oh, okay, she's expressed how she wants to be addressed. And so it's the onus is on the person who wants to give their pronoun, who wants to share the pronoun. It's not on those of us who are just <laughs> receiving. It's, it's really, a, it, it's kind of like when you go to a dinner party, and you're vegan, or you're vegetarian, or you have any dietary restrictions, or you have any preferences, it's up to the guest to share with the host what he or she or they um, desire. So I hope that helps. Let's see. What else? Absolutely. We must retain social skills. And, oh, this is a great one. I love this, Arden. On my registration form for public classes, I ask registrants what their preferred pronouns are. Excellent. And this also leads me to when you do a registration form, maybe you don't have just male and female. Um, because, again, you're putting people in uh, in blocks. So again, we have to think uh, more inclusively. So I love that. Okay. Connie says, I teach traditional etiquette in a modern world. I want to bring back some sense of formality and proper behavior. I will not accept any jobs that require me to teach anything outside of what my beliefs are. And absolutely, that's your prerogative. Um, and I um applaud you for that. I teach boys to men and girls to ladies. I believe there should be a proper dress code at work and at school, nature, natural hair colorings, no face piercings, etc. Although I am a boomer, I'm also a traditionalist. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, really good comments. Uh, okay, so uh, we have a few minutes left and I want to bring on uh, Patrick uh, to talk to us about what's going on in the East. As I said, he lived in China during the pandemic and I want him to also talk about his uh, the soft skills that he's been implementing. So Patrick, are you still here with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Patrick, just in a second, let me, before I let you have the floor, I just want to um, let everybody know that I'll stay on past the hour. If anyone wants to stay on and ask me private questions, I'm happy to do that. I'll just take us off record and we can do that. The second thing I want everybody to know is um, in 2023, I am launching... I am relaunching my Consultants Connection Mastermind Group. And this is something that I launched probably 15 years ago before anyone in our industry was doing um, mastermind groups for etiquette and image consultants. I launched the Consultants Connection to bring community and collaboration uh, to people within our industry because as you know, when you work alone, it can be a very lonely journey. So I'm going to mute everybody again. And Patrick, you may have to take yourself off mute. Okay. Um, but if anybody is interested in my consultant's connection, um, let me know. Just send me an email and I'll put you on the wait list and let you know as soon as it comes up. It'll be a monthly meeting where I do coaching. Um, I will bring in guest speakers to talk about the trends. I'll be talking to guest speakers on marketing ideas, social media ideas, 
anything to do with enhancing your business. So if you're interested in joining me in the Consultants Connection, just send me a uh, email at info at etiquette expert, and I will um, add your name to the wait list. So Patrick, quickly, I know we just have a, a couple minutes, but can you take about four or five minutes to share with us what you've observed in, um, in the East when you were there during the pandemic and how the world of etiquette has changed over there? Well, um, the, the East is uh, definitely very different. And the East is not a homogenous uh, mix of people with one belief and one practice. It's very diverse. You go to China, it's very different from you go to uh, Japan, for example. Uh, in Japan, they still expect people, engineers like myself, to have a, a suit somewhat and, and meet with them. And they always feel very, very uncomfortable meeting with American engineers dressed in jeans and, and T-shirts and unshaved. And they are wondering, how, how can I give a three... $30 million project to a guy who can't even have discipline to shave. That is what is in their mind. And Americans, us, myself, Canadian, same, same deal. We don't know that. And that is a big problem. And they, they lose contracts that they don't even know the reason why they're losing it. Everything else being equal, they will pick somebody who is clean shaven like me right now and uh, who is uh, comb their hair and uh, put on a pair of slacks and dress shoes, uh, and I win. So those are the kind of things that a lot of people don't know, and especially techies. They don't teach that in engineering school, by the way. So, so etiquette training is not a dead profession. It's, it's just that I, I think it can be marketed in a way where they understand. I go into engineering classes, and they try to laugh me out because they say, etiquette is so old school, Patrick, you're just a dinosaur. And I said, well, you, you are a dinosaur um, only because you don't understand because of ignorance. And, and those are kind of things that, uh, especially, like I said, if you go to the East, uh, China, they, they expect you to know the pecking order. If you don't and you, Ganbei, if you toast the people in the wrong order, you won't get the contract. You'll be, you'll be kicked out and you won't know why. A lot of people don't know why. I, I, I know all the stuff and we got the technology and all that. How come they don't call me anymore? Well, you know, because you're doing all the little things wrong. So I always tell people that it's the little things, that it's the details. And etiquette is not about what you feel like doing. It's about respecting others. It's about nonverbal communication. How the heck do you actually train yourself in nonverbal communication and expect other people to uh, kind of respect you. So those are the kind of things that uh, etiquette um, to young people, they don't understand. So I think the market is, is wide open and uh, companies are expecting, I, I saw somebody wrote down DEI. Those are buzzwords that I think every uh, image consultant and etiquette expert should know. And that is diversity, equity, inclusion. And that's a big, hot, debated field. I see somebody who's like me, a traditionalist, uh, you learn handshaking and uh, no pronouns and so on. Those are all nonsense. To baby boomers, oh, by the way, uh, most of the CEO positions, C-suite positions are still occupied by, by baby boomers. So they are the one in power. And unless young people can learn how to appease this group, you are at a disadvantage. Doesn't matter where to, how many tattoos you want you are at a disadvantage. So you want to have an etiquette system where everybody have a standard interface. That's why I always say you want to have a standard interface so that everybody know exactly what to expect, or what is expected in that regard. And so it uh, doesn't matter where it's east meet west or north meet south or wherever, um, those are kind of important things. I agree with you. Um, I, I want to share a quick story, Patrick. Um, a client told me, and and I love you. The word you used, you said attention to detail. And um, uh, Lori and I, Lori's on this call as well. She was in my train the trainer program last week. She called it the fine print. What is going to separate the leaders from the left behind? It's the fine print. 
And that's where etiquette training, soft skills training, emotional intelligence come in. And it's those people who are paying attention to the details, like you said. Now, quick story. Um, as, as you all know, these big accounting firms vie for, um, they send out big contracts and they, they all are competing for the same type of business. So you've got your Ernst and Youngs, your Deloitte's, your PWCs going out and maybe they want to audit, um, a company. So they all send similar proposals. They're all very similar in price, but this one particular, um, consultant told me, he said, well, he worked for this company that hired these accounting firms. And he said, they all send the same, uh, you know, similar information, but we chose one company over another for a specific reason. He said the other company, when the two guys, and it was two men, he said, when the two men came in to give their presentation to our company, he said they were chewing gum. And he said, it was such a distraction. He said, that was the deciding factor for us. He said, all things being equal, these two representatives that they sent our way were chewing gum. And it's like you said, Patrick, it's those details. It's the way you're dressed. It's the way you interact. It's the follow-up. And these, these are very important skills that I don't think are going to die anytime soon. Um, can you just briefly tell us the um, the work that you are doing um, with IITTI? Yeah, IITTI, if, uh, for those curious, it stands for International Soft Skills Standards and Testing. And so uh, a, a group of image consultants about 10 years ago and, and I formed this, this nonprofit to write the business standard uh, level one, we call that. And that is about uh, how you should uh, handle your business card. The dress code that we are no longer supposed to talk about, which I totally disagree, uh, because what, 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 the, what the heck are we supposed to expect, you know, if there's no dress code and we can do whatever you want? That is actually, there are a lot of research done in the field and also in academia saying that is the reason why there are so many young people committing suicide because they no longer understand how to navigate the modern world. There is no such thing as too much protocol. You can, now in engineering, they have all kinds of standards. And does it stifle creativity? No, it doesn't. It actually promote creativity because any kind of creativity, anybody can be creative, but unless you have a formal rules of sets of everybody expect what to do, you can't build anything that is substantial that everybody understand. So you need to have this protocol, this standard. And so what happened with the dress code? I was very interested in somebody writing that they, they forego standards in dress code at Kaiser. It would be very good. I would really love to know the reason why they do it. Uh, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Uh, personally, I think that is a, a step backward because like I said, there are a lot of social issues that are caused by the lack of uh, uh, etiquette. Now, some very wise men once said, etiquette are minor morals. So without even promoting the minor morals, why do we have so many scam artists and all that happening in this world? It's all because we don't have etiquette. So there are a lot of research saying that unless we really promote etiquette, uh, we may not survive the next 50 years. Uh, the, the reason why, because there, there are all kinds of climate issues and environmental issues. Now, you can hear all those people running around, big scientists and, 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 and all that. Oh, yeah, we know we got to do this and all that. They're fine. They are very passionate. They are even politicians who really want to do the good thing. Why do we still have climate issues? I was a busboy 50 years ago working in a restaurant. They have Habitat 73 or 75 or something like that. Why do they still have climate issue? It's because people are not feeling safe and respected at work in the community. When they don't have something like that, they don't have the mental space to think about the bigger things like climate change and so on. And when they don't have that mental space to think about climate change, they won't vote for the right politicians to implement the right policy in this world. That's why, you know, it's not the political will, it's because we, collectively speaking, 
don't understand. We don't have that mental space. So unless we have respect and protocol with that in our community, in the in in the world, things will never get 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 done. It will just be divisive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and speaking yeah. of divisiveness, um, that is when I talk about inclusion and diversity, that's generational as well. It's not just um, race or sex. It's it's also in, um, being open to other generations and, and listening to their ideas and fostering mentorships. Um, and, and so that's very important as well. And uh, the work that you're doing, Patrick, is, is so, so very important. And that's why I invited you on this call, because you have such a worldview perspective, not just what's going on here, but what's going on in the East. And, and we, we look forward to going, uh, you know, the world opening up so we can go and, and do our work overseas. I know China is near and dear to my heart. And I look forward to going back and, and um, collaborating. If, if I can uh, just put in a, a three letter acronym that I think all of us should realize, something called ESG, and that is environmental, social governance. Those are big, big words. A lot of investment, well, all the investment houses, all the big ones, BlackRock, uh, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, all that. They are having a lot of funds, trillions of US dollars, investing into what are what they call ESG companies. Now, this is a big, hotly debated topic again. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for etiquette experts to really have uh what, what is the word? A share of the pie. And it's a big pie. This, this is, you know, etiquette training is, is only at the, at the infancy at this point. In the next five, 10 years, if we play it well, if we have, can organize and tell the world what is lacking, this is going to be something really major, in, in, in my opinion. And there are a lot of issues, like, for example, um, with auditing, companies auditing and so on, a lot of businesses are really running in a very shady manner. Auditing big companies, um, that's why there are so many scams is because they don't have this very, very basic component. And that is uh, an etiquette in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, and will you type that in the chat so everyone can make note of that? And I believe someone even asked uh, if you have a website or your contact information, because this is all great. Um, and I, I'm like I said, I'm so thankful that you came and you spent your time with us today, Patrick. And I know we're um, at the top of the hour and many of our participants have to leave for other appointments and so forth. But um, if those of you who want to stay for a couple more minutes and you want to ask me individual questions, q and I'll stop the recording and we can, um, we can have a little informal chat. And uh, for those of you who have to leave and, and move on with your day, I really, really appreciate, number one, your interest in this topic and your love of etiquette and your support and your friendship for following me all these years and supporting me all these years. It's my joy to provide timely information for all of you so you can use it in your businesses to grow and to prosper and to reach a wider audience and hopefully change uh, the world in a, in a better way. So I'm going to just stop the recording and then um, we'll just open it up for questions. Mm -hmm.